Hi, everybody. This is Jerry Salai from the Society of Technical Analysts. I'm joined today with Trevor Neal, who's giving a talk at our Technical Trading Systems Conference on 18th of April, uh, 2023, at one Margate place in London. And it's also going to be hybrid. You can see him online as well if you can't make it to the conference in person. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> it's great seeing you, Trevor. So you're one of the big speakers at the event, along with Jason from Refinitiv. Is that correct? That's right, yes. And We're going to do it together. Um, uh, Jason is a programmer. I'm not a programmer. I'm a technical analyst. He's not a technical analyst. But uh, together, I hope we're going to have a very interesting and pertinent presentation for the actual subject, which is the transition from uh, old school technical analysis to new modern digital technical analysis. I, 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 I was at the last meeting that we had re with regard to the conference, and it looks like you've been given an extra 15 or so minutes because what you guys are doing is so important in terms of trying to get this across to people. Uh, like you said, the move from old school to new school, even though a lot of our members have been doing new school for some time, it's mm -hmm. something that we're actually broadening out in terms of the educational uh, part of the SCA. Yeah, well, first of all, we're thrilled to, to have the extra board of an hour because we want to do as much as we can um, live uh, we and do live programming, Python programming and testing and development, uh, you know, just to show how it's done. And the idea is to show how relatively straightforward it is to do. But uh, your other point you made just there, uh, Jerry, about um, people have been doing this for a long time. That is absolutely true. Uh, I, I must, it was I mean, the very first thing I did when I got my very first computer, which was an Apple II, was uh, was to test the moving average crossovers uh, to see which combination worked best. And there was a big Merrill Lynch report, which is still quite a famous report, um, doing optimization. And it was a sort of how to optimize kind of uh, report. And um, so that was back in the uh, 80s that uh, started with those simple things. And, and, and of course, since then, it's got more and more um, powerful and the languages have got to, easier to use you know when I started you you had to actually write code and and uh, then now we have things like easy language is brilliant you know that is uh, ubiquitous and mt4 and other languages like that and now more powerful languages coming on stream as well which are also accessible that's right and a lot of the print trading programs and um, charting programs like you said it just made it very easy for you non-coders to be able to try to quantify their views and their thoughts and to back test. Does this work? Does this not work? In which environment does it work? And there's lots of pitfalls and data management stuff that has to go in with it, which I think, given the, the range of the speakers that we have on offer, is going to be well covered. Yes, indeed. And one of the things that, um, uh, you know, coming as a technical analyst to, and not a programmer to the world of programmers. And when I was at Bloomberg, I had worked a lot with the programmers, developers, um, uh, you know, getting things onto Bloomberg, uh, powerful things onto Bloomberg. And so I began to to learn how to talk to programmers. And very, very often it's, it's daunting to talk to them because they have their own world and their own language. But I've realized, you know, for example, today, I realized that uh, we, we talk, um, uh, Jason was talking about uh, feature engineering. And I said, well, you know, what is it? And uh, apparently, you know, really just features are indicators. So a moving average crossover, an MACD is a feature. Feature engineering is putting them together. Well, you know, we nice. have a different name for that. <laughs> but, but basically, I, I got a, you know, maybe a little dictionary of translation. If you want to speak yes. to a programmer, you know, what he means by this is, or what do you want him to do that? You say this, uh, not what we're used to saying. And that's pretty much, you know, it, it's all in there. It just has to be translated into yeah. the correct uh, language. Um, yeah. I, I have fond memories. Here's one for you, Jerry. What is strategy support vector classifier? I have no idea, but it sounds like somebody's telling something, somebody about something. <laughs> well, you're right. But uh, you will. Let's say when you come to the talk, it's something you already know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way they say it. it. Sounds complicated when they say it. <laughs> I I had the privilege of working with the uh, quant team at Bank of America back in the 90s. And I just remember, you know, they were losing money every which way he could because it was <laughs> choppy markets and they were making some money this and the other. But I remember giving him a technical book and he came back and said, this bull flag. Now that's interesting. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> in, all, in all seriousness, when I do courses now, quite often I have, let's say, in a group of you know institutional courses, I and uh, maybe a dozen people in the course, could be four of them are actually quants, which which is sort of surprising that quants come to a course in technical analysis to learn the RSI and the stochastic and yeah. things like that. But uh, you know, I ask them why are you here. You know, really, you're great mathematicians, and uh, uh, and it's really when they're honest uh, what they tell uh, me is that you know they have been taught that the markets are more efficient and they don't have uh, they they're random in behavior and they don't have friends and they don't have momentum but now they're in the market they see that this is very much true and impossible things like crashes and and uh, bubbles occur you know which are statistically impossible but they happen quite frequently um, <laughs> So, uh, so that's you guys seem to have known that for uh, all the time. So that's why I'm here. And so, yeah. you know, the maths is simple, but that we use. But uh, actually, going up is a simple thing to describe, and being more complicated about it doesn't make it better. Yes, I, I think sometimes technical analysts do themselves a disservice by reminding everybody just how mm -hmm. simple our life is when we look at supply and demand and the price mm -hmm. that has to move to basically adjust the balance or imbalance between them. Yes. And people look at us yeah. and go, well, come on, what do you really do? And you go, okay, I look at supply and demand, and it comes through as the price. <laughs> and we look at the price to see if there's a trend and or a reversal of the trend for the most yeah. part. And we use a bunch of indicators to try to quantify our views yeah. as much as we can. Because, yeah. you know, usually we're in a hurry and we need filters of some sort if we're going to be looking at more than just one or two markets. Yeah. And they look at you and go, so what do you really do? <laughs> and you go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And simplicity, simplicity is really... Uh, a plus, you know, it's not a minus, you know, the fact that you can do it in a very complicated way, or you yes. can do it simply, you should do it in a simple way, because a simple way will be clearer, easy to understand, you will understand what the machine is doing, but once it becomes complicated, you lose contact. Oh, God, yes. Why are you buying and selling? You know, it's uh, it's taken over now. I, it, I it's buried why. somewhere in the code. I have no idea what the computer yes. is doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been in that situation yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things to avoid. Mm -hmm. All right, Trevor, well, I'm really looking forward to hearing you and Jason speak because I think it's going to be awesome in terms of, you know, having real life uh, production of what we are talking about. And that is something you're offering. And we have a lot of speakers giving different insights into the same problem from different angles, which I think is yeah. going to be really insightful. So, yeah. Trevor, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yes, I'm looking forward to I'm really looking forward to it. It's a wonderful uh, thing that the STA has done by having this conference. I've got to say that it's um, uh, it's really right on what's going on, you know, what's hot, you know, what people are doing in technical analysis these days. And um, it's brilliant. And I really look forward to it. And I hope it's the first of many. Great. I'll see you then, Trevor. OK, thanks, Jerry. Bye bye. See you. Bye.